Good evening, everyone. Wednesday night Bible study. Whoop, whoop. So glad that y'all are able to join me tonight um, in continuing our conversations through the Beatitudes. Of course, we're still in Matthew chapter 5. Um, last Wednesday was part 8. We looked at verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And tonight we pick up with part 9 in verse 10. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Let's pray together and we'll dive into the Word. Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming together and just fellowshipping around your Word. We thank you for your Word, true, cover to cover. Father, we, we're so blessed to have it. And Father, I just pray tonight you help us to understand it. You enlighten our hearts, you enlighten our minds as we learn to, to be more like Christ in our character, in our actions, in our words. Father, use it richly in our lives. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Conversations through the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Very simple. But... It isn't. Prolongingly, supremely blessed, by extension, supremely happy, by extension of God's providential rule, His authority, in, with, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, blessed are, not maybe or could be, but are blessed. We begin our study every time the same way. Are blessed. Now, we get into a subject that the early Christians fully understood. Unfortunately, they understood it all too well. We get into the subject of who is blessed in verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted. We, we come to the subject of persecution. Um, I just want you to know first uh, the verb. Look at the verb, the linking verb, are. The linking verb are, are persecuted. The subject is persecution. The linking verb is are. Notice the tense. Are is in present tense. That linking verb is in present tense. Persecuted. It's used to describe things that are happening and it also is used to describe things that are continual, continuously happening. And I've said it a gazillion trillion, quadruple billion, if that's even a thing. I've said it so many times. Context, context, context. Context is king as we study the Word of God. Of course, God and Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. But context is so very important as we study the Word of God. When we understand the context, who, what, when, where, why, Within the biblical historical context, we come to better be able to understand the translation, to be able to understand the true meaning. There is only one meaning, one interpretation, and it's driven by context. Now, once we get a grasp of the context, the biblical historical context, the best that we can, we then can make application. Again, there's only one meaning, but there are multiple applications, um, as I'm sure you, you, you've recognized and noticed as you studied the Word of God. Well, I know I've kind of gotten off track here a little bit, but, but me talking about the context and continuing to drive that that concept, that thought home, is something that God just won't allow me to be silent about because it leads to proper interpretation. Regardless of what you hear, regardless of what you read, context drives interpretation, drives the meaning, which then turns into multiple applications. It's so important. It's so important. So, at this point, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, the Beatitudes. At this point in the biblical historical context, Jesus had just, he had just started his ministry. So what I want us to do very briefly is to, to run through the timeline. We're going to run through the timeline very briefly. Um, now my timeline is not exhaustive. It is not all all there, but, but it's enough for our purposes for tonight as we look at verse 10. So let's look at the timeline very, very quickly. Uh, Jesus was born. 
Hello? Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He grew in wisdom and stature. As an adult, Jesus stepped out into the public scene and we find him at the Jordan River. What's he doing at the river? Well, he went to the Jordan River because John the Baptist was there baptizing. And so Jesus stepped into the scene as an adult at the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist. John the Baptist didn't want to have anything to do with it. He said, who am I to baptize you? I'm unworthy to unlatch your sandal. I'm unworthy to untie your sandal. Jesus said, this must be. He was the example of baptism, see. So Jesus being baptized at the Jordan River by John the Baptist. Jesus was then led out into the wilderness for, for 40 days and he was fasting and praying for 40 days. The devil showed up. And the devil tempted him with various things. You can study that on your own. Jesus told the devil to leave him alone. The devil had to do what he said. The devil moved on. And then angels came and they ministered to Jesus. After this, Jesus began preaching and teaching. He began his healing ministry. He also called his first disciples. Now we have... In the biblical, historical context, we have the Sermon on the Mount. Back to our text. The linking verb are is in present tense. It's used to describe things that are happening. It's used to describe things that continue to happen. Blessed are those who are persecuted. So, If persecution is something that was happening within the context, what persecution was Jesus talking about? Well, I doubt that there was tremendous pressure. I doubt that there was tremendous, a tremendous amount of persecution at this point. Now, we know that there was some persecution up to this point. John the Baptist and his followers did suffer persecution. But that's not what we read here. We don't see any mention either of the church until much later after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection when we get to the book of Acts. We don't see any mention of Christianity, of Christians, until Pentecost. Acts 11 verse 26 was the first mention of the disciples being called Christians. Why is Jesus at this point teaching, blessed are those who are persecuted? Why is he teaching that so early here in his public ministry? Because he knew what was coming. He knew what was coming. What was coming? Persecution. First, Jesus' own persecution, even unto death. Jesus' Life was threatened multiple times. Uh, once, maybe even twice, the crowds rushed to throw Jesus off a cliff. He was banished. He was spit on. He was cursed. He was beaten beyond recognition. And ultimately, eventually, He died on the cross. He died on a Roman cross for our sins, persecuted. What about the early church? The early Christians. They were thrown into jails. They were beaten. They were banished. They were burned as human torches. They were thrown into the arena of the Roman games. And these are just a few examples. It's just scratching the surface. just drops in the bucket of the per persecution that they suffered. God the Son knew what was coming. So here in verse 10, Jesus was instilling hope. He was instilling hope into the lives of the disciples, into the lives of His followers. His disciples, even throughout Jesus' ministry, even after Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to the Father, His disciples didn't fully have a grasp on everything. They didn't really fully understand everything. So at this point, they didn't understand what Jesus was saying about blessed are those who are persecuted. So they didn't, they didn't fully understand that. But what Jesus did was He planted the seeds of hope. 
And then over the rest of his ministry, he watered those seeds. And that came to fruition. That came to full bloom. For years and years and years, the Christians suffered severe persecution. He was instilling hope. Well, what was their hope? Well, the rest of verse 10. For theirs is the kingdom of of heaven. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now look back at our text again. The linking verb are in present tense. It's used to describe things that are happening and continues to happen. So just focus for just a moment on that part of the definition of the linking verb are. This part of it. Things that are continuous. Think about that. Things that are continuous. This means that persecution not only occurred in the lives of the early Christians, but it continues to occur today. In year 2020, Christian persecution were persecuted for our faith. What do you think Jesus meant? How... How deep and how wide and how much brevity did, did Jesus have when he said in Matthew 16, 24 and 25, listen to these words of Christ. Whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever will lose their life will have their life, will find their life in me. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me, for my sake, in my name, will find it. This still applies today. I'm having trouble with my camera. Sorry. You may be thinking, Pastor Mark, where is the persecutions of Christians today? Where is the persecution of Christians today? Um, we may not have experienced you and I may not have experienced severe persecution in our country. But let me tell you, are you listening? Other Christians in other countries are experiencing biblical proportions of persecution. Many are being murdered, mass murdered, hung, burnt, beheaded, on and on. In our beloved country, the United States of America, the severe persecution, I'm afraid, is coming. You may think I'm being flippant. You may just go, oh, whatever. But it's coming. What's the news? Ever so slightly it begins and then it builds and builds and builds until we find ourselves in the midst of severe Christian persecution. It's already begun. It has continued. It's never stopped. And it's going to continue. You know it's coming. You feel it in your spirit. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13 Listen to what he said. Listen to what he wrote. Now, he was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. These are not thoughts that Paul just snatched out of the air, out of a bag by, by drawing the short straw. These are the words of God through Paul, the Holy Spirit, giving them to Paul. Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Evil people, impostors will flourish. They will deceive others 
and they themselves will be deceived. So see, it's not going to get any better. COVID-19 has nothing over what's coming. I'm not being doom and gloom. I'm not being discouraging. I'm being real. I'm being biblically real. Persecution is here. Persecution continues and it's going to get worse. Just watch the news. Notice the nuances. So what do we do? Do we sit here and worry? Do we fret, wring our hands? Do we seclude ourselves? Do we become hermits? Do we, do we go into to monasteries and, and, and hide ourselves away? Do we go into caves and hide ourselves away? No, because we have a light that needs to shine. Hide this light under a bushel? No, I'm going to let it shine. We're to be here. We're to be examples. We're to be the lights to the world. Jesus Christ was the light. Now we take the Holy Spirit within us as Christians and we become the light of Christ. We are His ambassadors. We are His hands and feet. So we don't hide away. We don't fret. We don't worry. So what do we do? Knowing that persecution is here, knowing that persecution is going to continue and get worse, what do we do? Well, the first step is acknowledging it. Believing it. Because it's coming. Believe me or not. Believe the word or not. It's coming. It's here. It's going to continue. Let me read a text to you. I, I just want to read this to you. You can get your Bible later and study it more in depth. But let, let me read this to you. Matthew 10, 16 through 32. Jesus said to his first disciples, to his disciples, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. That's a little hard to do sometimes, isn't it? Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. Now, that is not a direct application because we don't aren't going to be flogged in synagogues. Well, hopefully not. On my account, you will, this Jesus continues, On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what you say or how you say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Grab that! Hold on to that! Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child to death. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, Jesus said. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly I tell you, you will not Finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Now, I leave that with you for your application. But I hope that you picked up on the answer to what do we do? when we're persecuted. What do we do when severe persecution comes? And it's coming. Matthew 10, 16 through 32. Look at that. Apply that. And then our beatitude for tonight. Jesus Christ instilling hope into the lives of His disciples. I'm one of His disciples. Are you? If you've received Christ as your Savior, you are one of His disciples. Christ's Seeds of hope instilled into us. Blessed are those, blessed are you who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs, for yours, for mine is the kingdom of heaven. Hope. Hope. Well, again, uh, I'm glad that you were able to, to be with me tonight, however you're doing that. 
your computer, your telephone, smartphone, through our web page, YouTube, Facebook. Um, I just pray that you really hear my words, hear my heart, and, and apply the Word of God, truthfully apply it. Not take it out of context and make it what you want to make it. It, it. it doesn't work that way. The Word of God doesn't work that way. Well, I just want to bring to your attention some of our prayer concerns. I'm telling you, there are many. But I'm just going to be able to highlight a few. Uh, memory and Gary, they, they had their baby um, last Monday, July the 13th. Um, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Memory, if I'm not pronouncing it right. Gary, if I'm not pronouncing it right, I'm sorry. Um, Leanna Blue Turner. Not sure about Leanna. L-E-I-A-N-I. -I, Leanna Blue Turner. Six pounds, ten and a half ounces. So little. 18 and a half inches long. So congratulations, Memory and Gary, on your gift from God. Be blessed. Uh, we want to remember, continue to remember Dudley Rogers' family. Uh, Mr. Dudley passed away, suffered for a long time. Um, uh, chemotherapy treatments and then um, uh, dialysis. And uh, the Lord just saw fit to take him home. So he suffers no longer. So we pray for his family in the grieving process. Very close friends of Charles and Brenda Peterman and their whole crew. So we want, may want to include them in our prayers as well. Cindy Edwards, her mom, um, was in the hospital for a few days with some breathing issues. Pneumonia, I believe. Uh, I don't think it was COVID related. It's just something that she has in her life as a health issue. So um, if you don't know the Edwards, uh, she and her family... Uh, sit about halfway back on the left side of the sanctuary. That'll be your right, my left. Uh, they're, they're members of Raising Arrows. They've become some good friends of ours and, and, and uh, they've been visiting with us. So we want to remember Cindy's mom. Uh, she's improving. I think her mom went home from the hospital. But continue to lift up that family. Uh, Rob Christian continues to be ill, continues to run fever. And you know with this length of time of him being ill, there's some ripple effects in that family. So we just need to pray for them. It'd be in any family. I, whew, I'd hate that to be my family. Um, somebody might not come out of this alive if that was my family. But we just need to remember Rob and Brandy and the Christians, Gabriel, John, Matthew, Rebecca, and then their extended family, Rudy. Um, and then um, Rob's mom is in Oklahoma, has been since COVID-19 hit. Um, so pray for Miss Betty and then uh, Brandy's mom and, and dad. Just pray for the Christian family. Seth's appointment was Monday. His uh, appointment to the pediatric cardiologist. Um, they took a very in-depth sonogram of his heart. Everything is fine. Everything looks great. Uh, they just talked it up to growing pains. And you all see Seth. You know he's shooting up there, getting taller. So um, that's a praise that it's nothing um, serious. That it's just growing pains. Uh, so thank you for your prayers for Seth. And Kim will be going through a gamut of tests the week of July 31st. It's coming up. So just pray for her. I'm going to do a, a test on her leg where they really observe the workings of her veins. Her leg keeps swelling. Don't know why. So they're going to do an in-depth ultrasound on her veins in her leg. Then they're going to do a, um, an ar arteriogram. Arteriogram? They're going to run, die, and, and probably go in through her growing or her, her wrist. Arteriogram, I think is what it's called. Um, don't hold me to that word, but they're going to look at her heart. And if, if she needs any stents or if she needs any the balloon procedure, then they're just going to take care of that then. We're hoping that there's nothing there. And then they're going to do a 3D ultrasound of her heart. Uh, to kind of see how her valves are working. They did tell her that she has a heart murmur and the cardiologist believes that back in November here at the church we were moving chairs getting ready for the Thanksgiving services when she had her first episode of breaking out in a sweat and having to sit down. He believed that she had a minor heart attack so we praise God that it was minor um, but um, just some more tests to kind of figure that out. And I know I went into a lot of detail about that, but a lot of people have been asking, so I'll just give it in detail. Um, 
covet your prayers. Our family does. I felt like Yoda right there. Um, so thank you for your prayers. Continue. So continue to remember Dave and Valerie. David, uh, Valerie with her breast cancer, uh, learning how to, what they're going to do, the, the procedures that they're going to go forward with. So just for discernment and for wisdom for Dave and Valerie. Same thing for, for John, uh, said Logic and Margie. John, of course, has cancer. Um, I don't know really how, what on a scale of cancer he has, but we just need to continue to lift him up. Uh, I saw him Sunday, many of you saw him Sunday, and he's still John, got that smile on his face. I think he did behind that mask. No, he did. You can see John's smile all over him in his eyes. and um, I can't wait for this coming Sunday. He's, he's teaching Sunday school. We're going to record that for his family to see. So just praise God for John and Marky. We love y'all to pieces if you're watching this. Just remember all of those in prayer. Um, Teresa Maddox, uh, Shirley Vineyard, um, Ella Zing Greer, those that still haven't been able to come back to church. Um, it was great to see uh, Huey and Betty back in church Sunday look, looking great. Um, so we just praise God for their health. Um, many others standing in need of prayer. Too many to mention. As you can see, this is, um, well you may not can see, the focus may be out front and back of prayer needs and more is added. Um, continue to pray for and over our prayer ministry that begins in August. We'll be having a meeting this week uh, of those who are interested to, to maybe put pen to paper to figure out what God wants to do through this. I know one thing that God wants us to do through this and that's to pray, pray for revival. We're going to continue to pray for revival in our church or in our communities and our sister churches around our parishes. Much needed. And so we're going to pray for that. That's going to be one of the things we pray for. And then eventually we're going to have our prayer wall built where you'll be able to take physical paper and write your prayer concern anonymously if you prefer and put it in those slots. And when we come to pray at the church intentionally as a group, then we will take those prayer concerns, pray for them, and you know that they've been prayed for because they will be moved to a separate section on our prayer wall. And then when they're answered, hey, we take those down and we celebrate those as a church. There's just some things in my head rattling around. And there's a lot of room in there. Um, so just pray and to see if God will have you be a part of our prayer ministry. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be enjoyable and we're going to have a great time seeing God move in our lives, seeing God move in our church, and again in our parishes, our communities, and our sister churches. Church, I love you. You know that. And I praise God for you. We're all so richly blessed. So let me lead us in prayer and we'll call it a night. Father, we just very quietly come before you. In all humility, brokenness, we're just pieces. Pieces in a greater puzzle. Your puzzle. And Lord, I pray that you continue putting each of us intricately within your puzzle, using us every day as we fulfill your purposes for our lives, Father. Continue to train us. Continue to mold us, break us down and remake us until we see you face to face in all of the glory that's promised us, Father. This is just temporary here. We have a hope. We have a future. We thank you for instilling hope in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Father, we just pause and, and pray for those people that I mentioned. Lord, you heard each one as I mentioned it. Lord, meet their needs. Real needs. Real concerns. We pray that you meet them. In accordance to your will, thy will be done. We pray, Lord, for understanding. We pray, Lord, for, for wisdom, for discernment. As we help each other navigate this life. Such strength is needed in the request I made tonight, Lord. Your strength is needed. Your wisdom is needed. And I pray that over those names that I mentioned. We know, Father, we trust you're going to meet each need. Again, give us the wisdom, the understanding to see that you are answering, that you are working in your way and in your time. 
Yes, but you're working. Thank you for loving us. Again, we're pieces. We're in pieces. We're broken people. Daily needing super glue. You're super glue. Holding us together in the Spirit. Father, we love you. We praise you. We exalt you. We magnify, worship your holy name. Thank you in advance for how you're going to meet these needs. We love you. In Jesus' name, we pray together and we agree together. Amen. That does it for this Wednesday night. Conversations through the Beatitude. Look for opportunities to have conversations around the Beatitudes, around any of the Bible studies we're doing. Our worship on Sunday, this coming Sunday, we conclude our uh, sermon series, Pop to the Fourth Power. Of course, our prayer series, our, our sermon series is on prayer. So we end that this coming Sunday and then we pick up, I don't know what, I haven't been shown that yet, but God's always faithful. He'll come through. So just pray for me as God leads me, prepares my heart, continues to prepare my mind to receive His messages for the upcoming uh, weeks or upcoming months. I know that He will. Well, again, I love y'all. I hope that you have a great evening and a great rest of the week. And I'll see y'all in the morning for Scripture reading and prayer. See ya.